Welcome to BigCountryPreps.com. I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Countdown to Two a Day series, our daily look at an area football team and the key questions we're going to be answering about that team in our Saturday, August 14th preseason preview here at Big Country Preps. I'm with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom. And tonight, Dan, we are talking about one of the, one of the powerhouses in our coverage area, the Brock Eagles. Yeah, and, and Brock's going to have a new look this year. Coach Chad Worrell uh, left in the offseason to take the El Campo job, and in his place they hired the Weatherford uh, football coach Billy Mathis, who's going to probably be opening things up a little bit uh, compared to what Brock fans have been used to. They've all, they've run that really power running offense uh, for so long, and then kind of that really aggressive defense. And then schematically, they're going to they're going to probably look a little bit different. I know at Weatherford they ran a lot of spread stuff and. It's going to be interesting uh, watching this team because I think that they've got a lot of pieces that, that would be really intriguing in a more wide open offense. You've got a running back in Cutter Wilson, the kid is very talented. Uh, he, he was kind of running in a, in a reserve role behind Cash Jones the past several years, but he's another guy who's really, really explosive. You've got a receiver in Eli Potts, who's a very, very good athlete. And then you've got uh, one of the best tight ends in the area in, in Nathan Jones. So you've got some guys who are going to be big time weapons. Uh, and it's going to be kind of fun how they, they, they fit those puzzle pieces into this new scheme. Uh, one big question mark will be that quarterback position, but they've got a, a junior in Tyler Moody who's, who's done some really nice things for, for their other teams, including their, their uh, baseball team where he was the second baseman. And uh, he's, he's already been an all-district defensive back for them, uh, a kid who's a really good athlete. So uh, they're going to have uh, look a little bit different, but they're going to be a team, I think, that uh, is still going to be a, a program to be reckoned with. Uh, Brock's expectations are always sky high, and they intend to meet him. One thing that jumps off the page when you look at Brock this year, this you know I, they've got to replace a lot of people, but this is not a small football team. They are loaded with big bodies. They're going to have an offensive line that is uh, ginormous. These guys are huge. Uh, this is a football team that should be able to get a, a push up front. And it starts with the tight end, Nathan Jones, who's six six and two forty. And we can we can go right down the list. We've got Caden Matthews. He's six one two twenty. We've got Landon clearly 6'2", 235. We've got Cade Harris. He's 5'10", 220. We've got Colton Stevenson, 6'1", 260. Trace Rogers, 6'4", 240. Josh Gleaton, who's going to be probably a, uh, just strictly a defensive lineman at 5'10", 200. Zach Shivers, who's at 5'8", 245. Zach Shivers, who's 5'8", 245. And then Wyatt Albritton, 6'1", 220. A lot of big bodies. And these are guys that can play either side of the football. They're going to have some uh, a lot of depth as far as size is concerned. They're, they're going to get a push up front. They'll be tough to run on again. This is going to be a good team. Yeah, and that'll be a plus uh, both on the offensive uh, side of things and in, in the defense where they're going to run that 4-3 alignment. So they're going to have plenty of big bodies to run out there and, and, and to, to push on the, the opposing offensive line. Uh, one thing that's going to be interesting is they don't return a ton of lettermen. There's not a ton of experience. Only 12 guys back who lettered last year. Six offensive starters, only four on defense. I think that's going to be what's going to be kind of a, a big question mark for them going in. It's going to be kind of a fun thing to watch is to see what – their defense, uh, how quickly their defense can kind of come along. They've lost some big time talent on that defense. When you think about those defensive ends, both D1 guys and Brett Drillette and Nace Washington, uh, Luke Dillingham was a, a D1 free safety. You're talking about some kids, Carson Carter, a really good middle linebacker, some kids that, that were multi year starters for really, really good Brock defenses. A lot of those guys, I mean, a lot of those guys are gone. So they're going to have to find ways to replace them. Uh, and then uh, it's just a matter of kind of how those, how quickly those new kids can step into roles and, and, and kind of, uh, you know, get where they need to be. But uh, it, it's going to be, uh, I think, a very intriguing uh, season to watch for Brock. I mean, you, you've got a new coach, which automatically, uh, I think, it, you kind of uh, piques interest there, just to see kind of what changes they bring and, and kind of what differences you'll see immediately. And then you've got new kids where that he's going to be kind of have to, to, to fill some holes with. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited about this Brock season. I think that there's still going to be a very good football team. Brock is absolutely a, a reload program. This program does not rebuild, but uh, with a new coach, it, it should still be fun to watch just to see how all those puzzle pieces come into place. One thing that uh, one thing that I'm looking at uh, is the fact that they're going to be able to plug a lot of the vacancies with uh, promotees from a nine and one junior varsity football team. Uh, they only have 12 Letterman back. They only have six offensive, four defensive starters, but they've got, a young group of kids that is accustomed to winning uh, that is coming up. I think that the big key for Brock this year is how quickly they adapt to the new system. Uh, this is a team that uh, ran a lot of, you know, three back sets, two and three back sets, 
uh, out from, you know, you know, from under center, mainly an under center football team. Now, if they, if they show more shotgun looks and spread the field, it's going to take a little while for them to adapt to that but they should be able to get a push up front and run the football and buy themselves some time while they learn it. That's the thing. And one of many things that, that coach Worrell did that I think will benefit coach Mathis is he played a ton of guys. So that like they, they played so many guys that even if you weren't necessarily a returning starter and in some case, even a returning letterman, cause JV kids got into playoff games. So uh, even if you weren't necessarily a returning starter, returning letterman, you've, you've experienced at least some game action at, at the varsity level. And I think that's important because it allows you to, to do kind of that plug and play system. And I think that will benefit coach Mathis, which, which is important because they've lost some big time playmakers. We talk about cash Jones. He's led the, I mean, a guy who led the entire area in rushing last year. And then Chris Palfreyman was a really talented uh, kind of a utility res- running back receiver who he transferred out. So he's gone as well. So that's going to open up some, some opportunities for, for other guys. Uh, but I think when you, when you're replacing those kind of snaps with, with guys who've already accomplished what a cutter Wilson has, what, a, what an Eli Potts has, you're still in pretty good shape. All right. Let's take a quick look at the Brock schedule. Only three pre-district games because they're on, they're in a big district, but they're, they have two challenges that I see Bushland at Childress to open things up should be a challenging game. And then that Iowa Park game at home could be difficult. We'll see. Uh, I would expect them to handle Nevada community fairly easily. But uh, then they open up uh, district play against Bowie at home on September 24th. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting that opener against Bushland. Last year, Brock just came out and waxed what turned out to be a pretty good Bushland team, 55 to seven. I don't think that'll probably happen this year. I think that uh, I would expect the game to be much, much more competitive. And then that Iowa Park game was an absolute classic last year. It was a one score game, really the only close game Brock played all year until they got uh, defeated, upset by Jim Ned in the playoffs. So I think that they, they got a couple of good tests there right off the bat. And, and I think they're going to need to because this is, once again, a, a really quality district in 4-3A Division I. Uh, you've got Pilot Point, which is perennially tough, uh, always a good program. And then Boyd, which has become a really quality program in recent years as well. And then Whitesboro, which has also had some great years uh, over the years. So uh, it's going to be a tough district. I think you're going to need to get prepared uh, through those non-district games. Uh, and it's just going to be, I think, exciting to see just the, the growth of this program uh, just in, in within the new schemes and Coach Mathis' system. I think that's going to be something that they haven't had to experience in recent years. Game of the year for Brock. What? How do you see it? Uh, I think it's kind of that game that's, that's, that's always been their game of the year uh, since they switched into this district. Uh, that's at, at Pilot Point in that regular season finale. I think that that has typically been the, the game that's played for the district championship. I think uh, that that Boyd game on October 22nd at home will also be a big one. But uh, I think pilot point to me is the one that jumps off the page is, is their game of the year. Yeah, that's a pretty easy choice. And that is a matchup that Brock has lost in recent years. They handled them fairly easily last year, but pilot point gave them a problem a couple of years ago. And that's typically for the district championship. If Brock is as good as we think they will be, it could be for all the marbles again and their season finale on November the 5th. Yeah. And then this is going to be a, a fun district race. It usually is. You usually have four teams in that district that are quality programs. And even paradise has, has won some games uh, over the past several years too. But, uh, but yeah, I, I expect Brock once again to be a, a quality program to field a quality team. And it's just going to be fun to see if, uh, if they can challenge that district title again and then, and then uh, turn that into a deep playoff run. Okay, that's just about going to wrap it up for tonight's episode of the Countdown to Two-A-Day series, the Brock Eagles. But we want to remind you that on Saturday, August the 14th, we're going to be answering all the key questions about Brock and every other team in our coverage area with our preseason preview. Again, that's going to be released on Saturday, August the 14th. We'll be more thorough and more accurate than any other, any other media source when talking about big country football. Nobody's going to beat us. In the meantime, thank you for checking out this episode of our Countdown to Two Day series. And make sure you join us again tomorrow. And we'll be highlighting the Snyder Tigers here at bigcountrypreps.com. <laughs>